Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life. Alrighty, the Explorer's locked and loaded. It is uh, 23 hours and 13 minutes into the 26th day of October. We are outside uh, doing our observations once again, and I'm wearing the hoodie, <laughs> the hood on, the hoodie, uh, because it is that cold out. It's uh, this jacket that I got online uh, from one of my favorite stores, uh, my online stores. Uh, I got it for $15, including tax and shipping, and it's the warmest jacket I've ever had. So <laughs> yay for that. Anyways, let's get uh, on with our observation for tonight. And typically out here, uh, while I'm waiting for trains and other things to sort of pop by to practice my observational skills and also do some uh, hidden background uh, atmospheric physics and oh, acoustical physics, uh, we have, I listened to Lionel uh, LeBron of uh, Lionel Nation and uh, use him in a sense of, in some ways, like almost like Q, uh, he's part of QLARP to some degree that he's part, for me, he's part of the game. He's one of my assets uh, in terms of bringing in information. Uh, and the thing is, is that typically you, you want to stay hidden in the background. You don't necessarily want to be up front. And, but in some cases, he is aware of what I am and who I am. And I see him adjusting his, uh, whether he gives me credit or not, he adjusts his, his uh, presentation to uh, some of the different uh, comments and the observations that I've made. And this uh, sort of, uh, this is how, uh, for me, I understand this is how it works. To change a person, to red pill a person, Further than what they've actually been red pilled is a, for me is a good thing. That's what I do. Uh, but you don't get any thanks for it, and it takes months to do this. He, as he stated, is not uh, willing to go through that. He wants people who have already been red pilled. But I said, even if you've been red pilled, you, you may not have been red pilled. In order to be the ultimate red pill, you have to move into a red pill state without actually taking any form of pill at all. You have to be that. Le le you have to achieve that level of awareness, and very few people do this. Conspiracy theorists, to a certain degree, do, but they require an enormous amount of work. And conspiracy theorists, I I'm not using this as a derogatory. These are people who, in many cases, don't have the capacity to understand someone who does have the capacity. So, if I have a the capacity to un understand things that most people don't. How do you bring that forward to a more general audience? And this is part of the harder question is that, you know, to inform people of what's going on. And this is the thing that Eisenhower says, that people need to be informed of what's going on or the shadow government will take over. Well, you understand the shadow government is in, in, in section. It's not one whole thing. It's, it, so I identify the papacy at the top. And they are at the top. Well, who are the bankers? The bankers were the Jews. That's the Rothschilds. Who's with Rothschild? Right? Schwab and Davos is the uh, Rothschild banking system. It's right there in front of you. They go go out and title themselves as such. They do like every Democrat does, every socialist does, that does social engineering or does deception. They reimagine things. So Davos is basically the reimagination, the, the reimagining of, well, well, the New World Order and more particularly the Rothschild banking system. This is why they're opposed to China. Why do you think the, the, this, the whole Davos thing is aimed at China? So it's not a, it's not World Economic Forum. It's the Western Economic Forum. It's the Papal Economic Forum. It's the Rothschild Economic Forum. But they're not going to call it that. They're going to call it global because their go goal is to take over the entire world. But uh, I don't I don't just finally realize what's going on in reading through the whole issue on on. on the Great Reset. They're in the process of committing suicide. This this is a group who's been at war for for more than more than a thousand years. They've been a continuous battle for a thousand years, and their next battle strategy. Their this is going to be their final battle battle strategy. And this is for the entire West. There, this is someone who's uh, you know typically a bully, going on. Say, okay, put up your dukes. You know, let's go fight. Let's go fight. They're itching for a fight. 
But instead of fighting the enemy, they begin fighting themselves. They begin destroying themselves. And so you watch the look like you can imagine the look on the enemy's face where you know they're they're, they're they're watching over the generals are watching over, and all of a sudden now instead of attacking the enemy, the what they call the, the, the Asian armies, the Chinese or the Eastern armies, they start attacking themselves. They start destroying themselves. So what's what's going on? Here? They're killing themselves. <laughs> I mean. The, the, this is kind of what, what's going on, and the thing is, it's difficult to explain this to people that what's going on now is 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 self destruction. It's like, well, we've never seen this before. Well, we have. It is. It, it has happened before. Let me just rephrase it. We haven't seen it before, but it has happened before. Just not to us. Not to the to, well, the American world. We were above it all. Europe saw World War One, World War Two. The United States didn't see anything. Uh, we went through the Cold War, which was basically World War Three. Uh, uh, Clinton reignited World, uh, the Cold War, brought in Cold War Two. Uh, Obama continued it, so we had Cold War Cold War Three. Uh, Clinton was going to do much further than that. She was it wasn't going to wait for Cold War. She wanted a hot war. She wanted World War Three with the uh, nuclear missiles in there, the lim limited first strike uh, capacity. You know, and this is the, oh, no, it's, it's going to be a limited nuclear strike. Uh, we'll, we'll get the first strike capacity, we'll knock them out, that'll be it. And the thing is, this, again, these scenarios that come out that are produced by these think tanks, they're basically nerds. They're doing live action role play. That's why they're called scenarios. If you're wondering why they thought, oh, it's a scenario this and scenario that, they did they did the same thing. They did scenario. They did a, a, a live action role play, a LARP uh, for COVID. They did a COVID LARP. They did Davos as a LARP. <laughs> that's what we're going through right now. We're going through the Davos LARP. And of course, you have all these other groups that don't want to be left out, and so they get their LARPs and you know, as well their live action role play. And there's a whole bunch of nerds just play, sort of playing, <laughs> pardon the phrase, playing with themselves. But we don't. Un but, but what's missed? <clears throat> I'm going to try to remember what I was thinking about before because I lost my train of thought. Was this last point? <sighs> you know, I come back to me because Lionel was talking about. Lionel was talking about uh, Alec Baldwin, called Aleko Baldwin. And the thing that goes on, he also brought up about uh, Brian Laundry. But I think, again, this is what sort of makes him a conspiracy theorist. Is he takes the information that's there and present, and he looks at the most, in many cases, the most obvious uh, observation is that, you know, that maybe his mother was hiding him. Well, okay, yeah, maybe, possibly. But now you have to put together some of, the, and this is from Brian Laundrie, his mother was hiding him. And look at the behavior. And he said, oh, he, this is what he was, he was talking about his love of, individual psychology as opposed to group psychology. But the thing is, group psychology can also be played as individual psychology. The two are reversible. The society behaves as the individual, but the individual also behaves as a society. So in other words, the psychology of the group, the psychology of the individual is transformative. It goes back and forth. And this is what you see in the book uh, in, in the book of uh, 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 crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky is the character, the main character. If you follow the the the, uh, the sort of the, the experience of the main character through the whole book, the character is a humanist, and near the end he goes into random destruction and then commits suicide. This is what was about. Read, read the history of the humanists. A lot of the humanists. Near the end of, end of their research, ended up start, uh, near the end of their philosophy, committed suicide. There was a lot of suicides amongst the uh, humanists, and because they had reached a point where they couldn't go any further, they said, "Well, this is it; it's time to die." And while the individual there in crime and punishment can be seen as an individual, this individual psychology, you can also at the same time see the group psychology that the entire society, the humanist society 
was following the same track because you're see, because we're witnessing it. We're seeing the destruction of the humanist West. And it's not somebody else destroying the humanist West. It is the humanist West themselves destroying themselves. It's self-destruction. The enemy of the West isn't the East. The enemy of the West is themselves. They are the idiot. They are as the they are the possessed. And this is again the works from Dostoevsky. You can take the uh, insult, the, the, the term, and look at Dostoevsky. Read his work on the work called the idiot. Read his work called the possessed, and then bring it back here. In other words, you can create these parallels. But back to Brian Brian Laundry. The question that he came up with a point that said, well. His, his mother may have been an accessory. This is his theory. But the problem is you have to look again, look at behavior. When a person is guilty, they end up doing something. Do you want to, if they can get away, they get away. But the thing is, is that if he wanted to get away, he would have gotten away on by, with his car. Brian Laundry was there for a while, knew he was being watched, and then went out for a hike. He, do, he does what he usually does. This guy is a hiker. So he went out for a hike. And he disappeared because the FBI and these dog the bounty, dog the bounty, bounty hunter didn't find him. They did eventually find him. Well, where did they find him? They found him in the lake. They found him in, in you know, in, and they just found the bones. They, they found the bones. They identified him. They identified these skeletal remains, scattered skeletal remains, through dental records. You can't fake dental records. And what happens is, is that this means this guy had been, had been dead, the amount of, we'll call it natural decay. <clears throat> he had been dead for a couple weeks. So the question is, what happened? Because all of a sudden now he's not a specimen because you see that he, he didn't take enough to go camping, let's say for three, four weeks. He didn't walk away from the house and go camping and plan to go across the country because you can't. There are enough trails through these national parks that you can go from, from, from coast to coast up the, up the north and you could easily get yourself lost, you know, for, from, from a, a societal perspective. You could easily get yourself lost in, uh, in, in the trails of the natural, natural, these uh, national parks. Uh, but he didn't do that. He didn't carry enough equipment with him to do this. He went out for a couple of days for a hike and never came back. And what did they find with him? They found a, 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 a sort of a drinking bottle in these, uh, like, like, I guess these these, these uh, sports bottles that they can put water in it and stuff like that. And they found uh, the laptop. And whose laptop? Well, it well, also had the information from uh, uh, Gabby Petito. Was, so he had, he had made, made no attempt to get rid of any of the evidence that it would tie them to his fiance and possibly her death. This is not a person who is guilty and knows he's guilty and is trying to hide things. He's not trying to hide anything at all. He never did. Now the problem is, well, why don't they come up with, the, with some of the real things? Why are they holding the stuff back? Because so the story just doesn't make sense. Well, maybe 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 someone who's an illegal aliens. How many illegal aliens have been sneaking across the board? There are a lot of cartels out there, and where are they hiding? They're hiding in the national parks. This is exactly where you would hide. You would hide in the national park. You would turn them in. Maybe he stumbled on a camp. Same thing with uh, Gabby Patil. They stumbled on some particular camp. I mean, to go off partying on your own because she that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to go party by herself. She met some people in the woods on the long trail. We're going to go take you to a party, and he didn't want to go. He was smart because there are a lot of people up front. They're very nice. They take you to a party, and that's it. That's the end of your life. There, there are gangs in the woods who are like that. They do this. But he couldn't talk his fiance out of it. She went. She was killed. I mean, no surprise there. He went out for a walk. He didn't come back. And so what happens is that there is no, if you look at the entire story, there is no foul play there. This is an issue being developed, again, once within within the media. It's a story that's being developed. 
Of course, you have to have some sensation to it in order to sell the story. So there's a lot of sort of interplay with the facts to make it more uh, entertainment-like. And this is what happens when you talk with Alec Baldwin. You talk about Alec Baldwin, and it's sort of the shame that people don't have any more compassion for Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's story is fast becoming one of these things that are again ripe for conspiracy theorists. Uh, and again, it's because there's not enough information there. And again, once again, he says that, that, that people don't know how to read through the uh, information. They don't have the capacity to do the in-depth research. So how do you get that information? No, not in long diet tribes. That are, you know, Alex, Alex Jones is, uh, I watch his stuff, his stuff, three, four hours in length. And he really doesn't say much of anything. There's very, very little in it. His more reactions to things. Uh, Lionel does the same thing. His is mostly react. He does these sort of uh, plays where he acts out the emotion. And, and in there, you can sort of see his uh, 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 exacerbation, his his emotions are transmitted through these sort of uh, miniature skits, if you will. It's a lot like, like well, it's a lot like he, he partly enough, he, because of his background experience with the Jesuits uh, and, as a schoolboy, he reminds me a lot of uh, of, of George Carlin. So he's a, he's a, if you would want to say something, he's a bit Carlin-esque. Uh, that's how how you would place uh, Lionel, look upon from Lionel Nation. And I had to say that because uh, but I say, oh, oh, Lionel LeBron. Oh, you're talking about LeBron James, back on the basketball star. No, Lionel LeBron. Le- LeBron is his first, uh, the basketball player. LeBron is his first name. This is Le- Lionel. His last name is LeBron, and he. So I always reference uh, Lionel Nation because that's your proper reference. Uh, so people don't get lost, and people do get lost because there's a lot to absorb here. You're trying to do a lot in a very short period of time. Half an hour is not a long period of time, so. People do it to get lost. So, but but what is Lionel missing here with the Alex story? Well, Alex is Alex. Uh, well, in Greek, it's Alex, or uh, they have a uh, A L E C, right? Alec, A L C A L E C. In Greek, that would be Aleko, right? This is it wouldn't be. <laughs> so, maybe, I guess uh, Alec Alec Baldwin was at some point in time trying to become. Trying to become uh, a Greek. <laughs> this is this is his neoclassical move. I, if you don't understand the reference, go look at neoclassicism, neoclassicism, uh, the and, the and the classism as well. And you'll see this is how uh, the Germans, the uh, basically the uh, uh, the Aryans connected themselves to the ancient world was through the neoclassical studies. In which Europe envisioned itself, <clears throat> and this is why you have it being called the Holy Roman Empire, as an extension of the great empire that sort of was from the Greeks all the way through the Romans. Uh, but then it was never what it was. The, the, the entire European sphere, and this is why I t- say you have to go back and look at the Holy Roman Empire, and particularly the creation of the papacy. The whole thing was a work, it's a lie. Uh, but then again, it, it, they tell you that it's a lie. This is why you have the all-seeing eye on, on, on the uh, pyramid. It's the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. This is why, if you look at, the, they talk about the black mirror because there's a blackness to it. In Gnosis, Gnosis is knowledge, but it depends on where you get the knowledge from. If your Gnosis is from the dark side, if it's dark knowledge, the knowledge of evil is coming from Lucifer. If it is evil, if it is knowledge of the light, then the light does not come from Lucifer. The light comes from the Holy Spirit. It's the light of the Holy Spirit. It is the life-giving light. It is the force. I mean, this is what I've been coming up with a new series, and it's the title, the the sort of the the ancient the ent- uh The beginning part will be doxa tito, doxa tito force. It means blessed is the light that comes in. Come, they think blessed is the light that comes into the world. And they're talking about Christ. They're talking about God as being the light. And, and of course, when you talk about God, you talk about uh, the, uh, Christ, which is the, the Son. You also have to include the Holy Spirit, 
because they're all free present at the same time. And this is where you talk about the light. You talk about the force. Uh, the Panagia, they call her Mary in uh, in the Roman Catholic Church, and most of the your your uh, your uh, oh, it was like Catholic. The Western children always talk about Mary. We call her Panagia or All Holy. Right? Panagia, All Holy, uh, and we call her. And that basically means mother of the light. And there was no there was no sort of intermingling that that, that that the light was held within the physical being and the light became man in terms of a physical being. And this is this is something that that is not understood by what we call conventional logic. But has an analogy in uh, has an analogy in quantum physics in, in the dual existence in the in the multiple existence. But these aren't these aren't hypo 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 states or super states, which all states exist at the exact same time. In terms of a theory, this is something that's real. This is the same thing with with, with parallel universes. Uh, the experience of parallel universes again within my experience uh, within the path I'm on. Is not something that is mathematically or called uh, Euclidean flat space parallel. This is something that's beyond it. This is getting into the entry point into curved space time. Curved space time, your linear geometry starts to fail, and in the linear, well, you can use some of the linear geometry to start using some of the, the Euclidean geometry to approximate it. This is what calculus calculus. Calculus is the flat space geometry used to identify and approximate the third dimension or even possibly more dimensions than, than the third. It, 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 this is how you'd have path integrals. So this is the path integral was used to find the Higgs boson. Now, I know I've lost a lot of people on that, but this is where you have to go back and do some research. But anyways, Lyle has missed the point, missed the opportunity to now start red-pilling Alec Baldwin. He says, and I'm pretty sure he was true about this, that he was at one point in time friends with Alec Baldwin. Well, all his, all of Alec Baldwin's have now left him. He's all alone. His world is collapsing. This is the time for Lionel going, hey, buddy, come hang out with me. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to be, you know, beat the person over the head that you're red filling him, but just come out and hang with me. And as he hangs out, because now he's lost everything, he's Alec Baldwin is going through right now an existential crisis. And it's in this existential crisis, this is when people can be red pilled and they can red be red pilled even further. This is why, you know, why do I keep pushing, keep talking about Lionel? Lionel, like, well, good, he's, he's, good, he's good for observation. But at the same time, if I notice that he's watching what I'm doing, and he's responding, this is my chance. I, you know, I know he's red pilled, but to get him, well, to get him. Here's the planet. He's floating around that planet. I want to bring him into a larger, into a bigger order, orbit. I want to bring him into a larger orbit. That's what I want to do. That's the game. QLARP. QLARP is taking a person from wherever they are, in terms of the planet, bring him into a orbit, and then you know, eventually removing them from the matrix. You have to get people in terms of QLARP outside the matrix in order to be successful. But a very difficult thing to do. It takes. It doesn't take. It doesn't take weeks. It takes months and years. I've been looking at Lionel now and throwing my little pebbles of emails and so on and so forth that he complains about. I've been throwing these pebbles at him for close to five to six years. That's how I measure, that's how I measure things. Throw a pebble. Do I see a change? Do I see a ripple even if it's a tiny one? Throw another pebble. Do I see a ripple that's even a little tiny change? You keep doing it. If you see a good change, you go, you keep doing what you're doing. But the thing is, you can't do too much. You have to know when it's too much and when it's not enough. You, you know, you have to sort of pace yourself. And it's this is how this is actually how this these uh, sort of the observation of Lyle. This is how that evolved. Is from the initial uh, the, the initial 
pebbles that I was throwing to something more uh, like, well, con concrete. <laughs> so concrete is a much larger pebble uh, than uh, a tiny little, tiny little pebble rock. Uh, but I said I don't. I, I hope that he'll see this because this goes up right away. This is current. This vlog is current rather than being post dated. Uh, uh, so maybe he, this will reach him and see uh, what he's done. And the thing is, is that this is about understanding things in a new way. But it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be months and years. Anyway, so we'll keep moving along. It's time for me to go inside. Once again, it's it's, it's about uh, uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit up here. They're having a, a, a uh, we'll call it a, a, a nor'easter, but... Uh, I don't want to tell you what it is because that's not what it looks like. What what's happening is what's what's sort of what New York is responding to is our two larger vortex, one sitting over the Hudson Bay, that reaching all the way down to Toronto. Uh, this is where I am, the north tip of Toronto. Uh, and uh, there's another one sitting up uh, in the. Uh, uh, North East Atlantic, uh, off the East Coast, uh, and what it's doing is it's blocking. You know, they're having the nor'easter, but what it's doing is blocking the hurricanes that were coming directly to New York. These were some of the strongest hurricanes I've ever seen. This is why they're talking about super cyclones. Super cyclones are based on these theories and models. They're not real. They're a, math they're a mathematical hallucination. But once again, if he doesn't sit down and do the observational work nor do the other scientists, uh, then they're going to have these theories that uh, more often than not are wrong. But this is how you get the idea that uh, they're, engineering this, they're engineering the Earth. But anyways, <laughs> that's going to be left for another talk, uh, another observational vlog out here. But uh, I will see you uh, probably tomorrow night. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.